Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, Sean, Sean Chi. Yeah, Sean Chi. Sean Chi beat expectations. Now, what a difference a day makes. Uh, we had a lot of people jumping on us in the comments on older videos. We were talking about the current box office prediction for the movie at the time, which was not good. Right. And we also said that they're all going about Labor Day weekend box office record, which we, we kept saying well, they're going to beat it no matter what. Yeah. Because yeah. even their low end projections beat the $30.4 million record that was in place. That was a no brainer. It was always going to beat that record, which we said. So as of, you know, September 3rd, the day before the movie dropped, even media outlets were like, it's going to have a really disappointing yeah, opening. Yeah, they said just day before. So they were, yeah, what, 35 million to 55 million was the estimated. Yeah, yeah. So the story here isn't that it beat the Labor Day box office. It was always going to. That was like oh, a nothing yeah. burger. Yeah. The story is that it beat expectations and projections. But no one's saying that. All they're running with is beat Labor Day weekend. Yeah, they're not telling you. Labor Day weekend was only 30.4 million was the record. I mean, if it didn't beat that, that was going to be a more of a surprise than it beating it. Of course, it was always going to beat that. Everybody oh, knew that. Oh yeah, the Suicide Squad beat that. Right, you know? water so is wet. Yeah, you so know? We're, we're going to talk about uh, uh, Sean, Sean Chi. Would you stop doing that? What's that? They call him Sean. Yeah, his name's Sean. Okay. His name's Sean Chi. Sean Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings beating expectations uh, here on Clownfish TV. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, 234,000 subs. Woo! Uh, thank you so much for the support. We do talk about uh, Marvel, we talk about comics, talk about animation, whatever interests us. Now, for those of you who don't know what we do on the channel, we react to news. We don't mm. make the news. Yeah, gosh, you guys give us so much credit. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You know, we, we, you control, feel so good. we control the news. No, we react to news and until uh, just a couple of days ago, everybody was calling that this movie was only going to do 35 to 55 million right. domestic. That was what they, they figured it was going to happen. Everybody. In fact, they were trying to soften the blow. You know, the day before, they're like, hey, guys, don't get your hopes up. Disney. Disney wrote this movie off. Disney did. You know, and I think they did. I'm going to be honest. I think they did a huge disservice because the marketing was terrible. They barely marketed it. They're just like, yeah, okay, this one's, this one's, we're going to take the L on it. We're going to focus on the Eternals and focus on Spider-Man. You know, honestly, I think that, you know, him making the comment, Chapek making the comment, it was an interesting experiment. And then the guy's reaction to it actually might have done more to help it because people are like, well, we'll show you Bob Chapek because, you know, we're going to go see it. But we said... If you look at our videos, here's what the projections are. Yep. They keep going with the narrative. It's going to beat Labor Day box office. We said from that point, it was, of course, it's going to beat Labor Day box office. Even the lowest estimate was beating Labor Day box office. So the media is out there running with this narrative. But the actual story here isn't that. That was a given. The story here is it beat expectations. They're all kind of doing it a disservice by not addressing that. Yeah, it's it's really weird. But then the thing is, is this this situation might actually give more ammo to Scarlett Johansson's legal team mm -hmm. because if, that's uh, true. Because if Shang Chi did way more than they thought it was going to do theatrically, if they had released Black Widow in a theater, it might have broken a hundred million, mm -hmm. hundred twenty, whatever. But they gave people the option of watching it at home too. So they might actually give her legal team more ammo and be like, yeah, look look what this movie did with a, a character that nobody knew anything about. Right. You That's know? a very good point. Uh, and uh, Black Widow would have done much better. That's so, a valid point. You know, maybe they, maybe they were down. Hey, stranger things have happened. Maybe they were downplaying it because they're like, yeah, let's just kind of like, look, like putting theater in a bomb. I don't see? think so. I think I that they were, they well, that could be, but I think it, well. Because the kind of thing of it when they stopped promoting it very much was around that time. But I think it's more because they knew Eternals needed more help. Yeah. The projections on that I don't think are as good. And so they're trying to ramp that one up. But, you know, oh, by the way, happy Labor Day to people who celebrate Labor Day. Um, Yeah, these, these outlets keep like, oh, my God. I mean, in lockstep. Broke Labor Day weekend. Yep. Broke Labor yep. Day weekend yep. records. It's like yep. it was always going to. No, yep. That's like, oh, you know, shocker. 
Yeah, it, they, it was always going to. They only had to do better than three million, uh, even at the low end. The low end of the projections. It was, yeah, thirty five. It, it, it would have. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It would have uh, be, but yeah, again, the real story is it did supposedly seventy one million in. Three that's days. for the first three days. It's not counting, you know, Labor Day. Yeah, they're estimating it'd be. What are they estimating it? Like eighty something. S uh, yeah, I think eighty six like or something like that. Um, they're estimating with Labor Day. Um. It, if you're going to compare apples to apples, though, for three day, um, you have that that breakdown. Where is the list? Right here. Yeah, breakdown. And you can see these are the openings of all the films. It it finds itself uh, above Thor and below Ant Man and the Wasp for three days, um, because you're not counting the whole Labor Day. So three days. It's it's in between those two for three days. Yeah. Now keep in mind that's during a pandemic and with an unproven character. So. Right. So, I mean, you know, it's because Ant Man the Wasp, it was Ant Man the Wasp. Yeah. So, not the original Ant Man. So, beat that. Um, now, they were saying they projected it for international, what, between 100 and 160 with the international box office. And I think it was around 120. Yeah. So, so okay. it, was, it fell within that, too. Um, not surprising. And people are acting like, oh, my God. Oh, and I'm just like, yeah. that was a given. Anyway, um, but, yeah, so we actually saw the movie. We did a review of it. It it was it was okay. You know, it wasn't, I don't think it was the best movie ever. There's a lot of people out there that are like, you know, it's, it's like this is one of those things where you have to tune out the, the, whatever the talking points are because the talking points are all like, this is groundbreaking for representation reasons. I'm like, no, just put the movie out there. And it either does good or it doesn't do good. It's either good or it's not good. And if you tune that out and just watch the movie, it's it's an okay movie. I do want to correct that the, the weird creature was not named. Um, we, we said Murray. It was I Morris because we didn't care. Because really, he was more annoying than anything. Um, oh, it was I just hated a cell that plush. Yeah. And that's what it was. It's Morris, not Murray. I also want to point out people are like, oh, you know, people get mad. It's so funny to me. Like, they want you to defend them. And then, you know, speak for them. But then when you like someone they don't like, then you're a terrible person. You don't know anything. Um, I want to point out one thing that keep, people keep bringing up about his sister. Okay. I want to bring this up. Because they keep saying, well, how could his sister kick his ass? There's a very good reason why his sister could kick his ass. His sister was running an underground fight club for several years where she was fighting every day. He was pretending to have no powers and not fighting at all for years. With no one, and they thought he was getting bullied because he wasn't using his power. So when you don't use it for several years and your sister is using it every day, she might be able to kick your ass. Just saying. Yeah, punch, Sorry. Punch in faces, parking cars. Punch in faces, right. parking Who, cars. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. sure he could outdrive her. I'm sure he can. Um, but but Aquafina drives them all, as we as we've seen. Well, but, she had to have something to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But I'm just like people keep bringing that up, and I'm like, no, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, um, you know, it just does in this in this in this scenario. Well, we ran into this with Solo too. Like we we try to be objective. I mean, so if something's good, we're gonna say so. Yeah, I mean. And we went to go see Solo, and we're like, hey, Solo wasn't terrible. And I still stand by that. I mean, I, I saw part of it the other day. It was on, you know, one of the channels and and I don't know, whatever it was. And uh, I was like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It, it wasn't, it definitely wasn't great, but it wasn't like Last Jedi caliber. No, it wasn't. Like franchise destroying. It wasn't bad. It, I mean, and then again, the same with, with with this movie. I think when your expectations are so low. Well, that's just it. I mean, anything better than than, you know... What your expectations are is going to be good. Um, I mean, if I, I, I think if you watch it next to a couple of the really, really good ones, then see, you know, I think if you watch a couple of the really good Marvel movies, the really popular ones, and then watch it, and then you can maybe make it better. Uh, yeah, know, I mean, my my litmus test for Marvel movies is can I watch it again? That's what my litmus, litmus test for pretty much any movie at this point. Yeah, can I watch again? And I could watch uh, Sean Chi again. I don't think I would be able to sit through Black Widow again. I don't think I'd be able to sit through Captain Marvel I would, again. I wouldn't sit through either one of those again. Um, you um, know, and, and, you know, if we're Star Wars, uh, our test is we won't even watch Rise of Skywalker. I mean, we probably will someday. Yeah. But every time we think we're going to watch it, we can't muster up enough give a shit to do it. So um, we haven't seen it. And I won't watch Last Jedi again. You'd watch, uh, you know, the, uh, the Force Awakens again. I would not. I, I won't watch the Force Awakens now because I know where those characters wind up, and I have no interest in watching it. Again. But like, you know, yeah. at least we're consistent. Like when I didn't like it, I call out bullshit from the Force Awakens on. I wasn't like one of those people that were like, "Oh my god, it's the best thing ever," and and then until they thought that they'd make more money, 
hating on it. Like we're at least going to be honest. If something sucks, we're going to say so. If something's good, we're going to say so. That's what we do here. We don't just like, you know, pander to people to make them happy. I'm sorry. Um, you know, sometimes you'll agree with us and sometimes you won't. And that's completely fine. You are allowed to yeah, like things. You are allowed to, allowed to not like things. That's what we're different. Like we are not going to care. If you love it, that's great. If you hate it, Yo, know, hey, I hear you. I understand. Also, okay, you are allowed to feel how you feel about the movie. But back to the point of this, the, the narrative actually should be, it did beat expectations. That's the story. It's not this Labor Day box office record. Yeah, that, that was... That's, that's low hanging fruit. Well, I think, I think that's the most impressive thing because they can be like, oh yeah, it beat, uh, you know, it beat expectations, whatever. Um, you know, it doesn't sound as good as it beat this record because But then be still, upfront what the record is. Are they even telling you what the record is? They say it beats the record, but Yeah, you have to read like three or four paragraphs. It was it always like, gonna beat that record. I mean, that's like, you know, somebody, you know, tripped and fell out of the gate on a run, spent three minutes trying to get up, and then their time sucked, and the next person, you know, you know, maybe not that was as fast, but just went right through and didn't have any and missteps. Of course they were gonna beat the record. Yeah, and like I mean, it also is interesting though too because uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to use the pandemic as a shield anymore for movies because it did release on like what, like forty two hundred screens or something. Is that what it was? Forty three hundred screens. That's that's like a full house. That's, yeah, that's more than they released it on more than they had for Black Widow. Yeah, more than they did for Ant Man and the Wasp too. Mm -hmm. So and Ant Man and the Wasp was not doing a pandemic. Spider Man. Spider Man was only a couple hundred screens more. So, I mean, at this point, they, I don't think they can use the pandemic as a shield anymore. They'll say, well, if people didn't come out or whatever, but yeah, I mean, because they still will, because it's Disney. And you know, not being, uh, it's Disney. So is it possible that maybe some of the tickets that were sold weren't actually sold? It's Disney. Well, that's also possible. Okay, so that that conversation is going to come up because a lot of people said that they were there uh, opening night or preview night, and there weren't a lot of people. We in the were theater. there um, opening night, and there were hardly anybody in the theater. Like maybe maybe ten. But it was also matinee. It was like four. That's true. But the thing yeah, is, a lot of people so I've seen, they were showing, they were, well, I know people were going to the, to the Thursday night, like prime time openings, and they were showing the, the, where the seats were available for, for ordering their seats, and like no seats were sold. Mm. Or there might have been like a, a five people in the theater. So we kept seeing that with Captain Marvel, um, the theaters were sold out, and people were taking pictures of the theaters, and like half the seats were empty. Now people could argue, oh, that was before, like 20 minutes before the movie started or something like that. But the fact remains, there was a lot of theaters that were supposedly sold out that weren't full. Yeah. You know? So Disney has been known to do some things, you know. I, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, either way, the movie was better than we expected it to be. And I can totally admit that. I mean, we didn't really have any expectations for it. We were just like, this character, nobody knows who this character is. They're not marketing it. And frankly, the marketing sucked ass. Because uh, looking at the trailers, I'm like, I have zero interest the in The final trailer was the only trailer that I think that did actually gave it a fair shake. Yeah. It's like what we saw with the Eternals. The early trailer sucked. The second one was better. But still it still doesn't. Great. Not great. And they're no. not, they're, whoever's doing the trailers needs to up their game. Yeah, I mean, if you if you had, I understand you want to hold things back, but if you had, spoiler, spoiler, if you had shown Shang-Chi on a freaking Chinese dragon fighting an eldritch horror, people would be like, wow, that's pretty cool. I've never seen that in a movie before. Mm -hmm. Let's go see it. Yeah. You know, but, but that would ruin it. That would ruin They did a good job holding that back. But anyway, we got to wrap this up because we have a party to go to. We do. So anyway, congratulations, I guess. We'll, yes. We'll... And, you know, it was exactly like we said it was going to be. It broke the Labor Day record, which it was always going to do. And here's what the projections were. We can't control what, what the, you know. What the media says. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.